The natural world is governed by rhythms. The flap of a bird's wing, the beat of a heart, the rising and setting of the sun. Stonehenge was built by Neolithic farmers as they tried to decipher the rhythm of the seasons. The same natural cycles that were vital then still govern our lives and those of other animals. provides the basic rhythm that times all life, including our own. The influence of this 24-hour cycle is so overwhelming, most animals have developed an internal regulator, or body clock, that follows its rhythm. Our own body clock still measures the sun cycle, even though we've found ways of improving accuracy. Even in the city, we cannot escape these natural rhythms. We may rely on watches to time our departure, but starlings using a body clock arrive to roost just as accurately. Although we supplement our time sense artificially, we still follow the same daily rhythms as other life. In darkness, the body clock still keeps track of time. It even controls the movements of plants. It makes us feel tired at night, changing blood pressure as well as heartbeat. It regulates the activity of our pets in the same way. As the sun cycle brings a new day, the starling's body clock times its departure from the city. They use the position of the sun as a navigational aid. Although the sun arcs across the sky, the bird's time sense is so accurate it can compensate for the sun's changing position. At any time of the day, it knows where the sun should be and so can use it as a compass. Without reference to the sun, body clocks lose accuracy, drifting away from the 24-hour cycle. The regular variations of light and darkness act as a synchronizer, keeping body clocks linked to the 24-hour rhythm of the sun. Accurate body clocks are essential for insects like honeybees that time their activity to the opening of flowers. At precise times each day, internal clocks control petal movements of plants such as bindweed. Bees synchronize their visits to these opening hours. The timing varies for each flower and the bees are only rewarded with nectar at these specific times. Like birds, bees use the sun to guide them. Their time sense not only compensates for its movements, but also helps them memorize up to nine different opening times. Flowering is so closely linked to the bee's activity, many close once the pollination time has passed. A different kind of clock controls the seasonal activity of many birds. House martins time their spring arrival from Africa using a body clock that beats to a yearly rhythm.
Away from the tropics, nesting is linked to the seasons. Each year, with miraculous precision, life responds to these changes of temperature and light. As the ground warms after winter, spring flowers such as wood anemones blossom into life. Celandines race to beat the canopy, soon to veil the light of the sun. As well as gathering light for photosynthesis, the leaves measure the increasing length of daylight. As the days lengthen, the altering ratio of daylight to darkness causes chemical changes in the buds of the trees. The leaves react to the new rhythm of light. The fresh growth will not be left alone for long. Just as caterpillars time their emergence to the leaves, there is a bird that times its life to the caterpillars. The lengthening days are sensed by the blue tit. As in other birds, the light passes directly through the skull itself to the pineal organ in the brain. This regulates the yearly clock and allows the blue tit to time its brood to the glut of caterpillars. Some birds have such an accurate time sense, they lay their eggs on the same day each year. These were laid on the 25th of May. The accuracy of the sparrowhawk's timing relies on the information from a yearly clock as well as day length. It times its brood to the summer crop of blue tits. The sun has such power, it also influences the yearly life of mammals. Here, the daily variations of light are sensed by the eye and measured in the pineal organ of the brain. In deer, it controls the amount of food eaten and triggers a remarkable transformation. Cutting of stags coincides with the shortening days. The light changes stimulate the release of hormones which control the deer's sexual activity. Changing day length also causes a spectacular transformation of the landscape.
the golden hues of autumn are triggered as the days get shorter. The brown pigments are unmasked as green chlorophyll and other nutrients are absorbed by the tree. The leaves drop as a hormone destroys a band of cells at the base. This leaf shedding avoids water loss over the winter months. As the shadows lengthen and the days shorten further, other life prepares for winter. These light changes are sensed by the brown arctic hair. As the days get colder, its fur becomes thicker and whiter. Prompted by the shortening days, the hair is now camouflaged for winter. As winter sets in, plant life slows down or becomes dormant. Encased in ice, time is suspended. With little to sustain them, many animals find ways of opting out of winter. In hibernation, the heart of the dormouse has slowed from 300 beats a minute to just six. With life and time almost suspended, winter will be brief. The moon also has an influence on the timing of life. In Africa, the full moon rising over Lake Victoria triggers a remarkable spectacle. These are mayfly. After months of scavenging, the larvae now respond to the beckoning light. They prepare for the last brief moment of their existence. Thousands of these adults emerge simultaneously to mate, synchronized by the full moon. The glut of mayflies not only brings the adults together, it ensures that predators are quickly satiated. Within a day, they will all be dead. The moon affects even the oceans. Its gravitational pull causes the sea to bulge towards it, creating a tide. As the moon continues its orbit, the water begins to recede. Once the moon reaches the opposite side of the Earth, centrifugal forces create the second tide of the day. Life in the tidal zone needs to predict these changes. Rock pool activity is based on this 12 and a half hourly rhythm. Many of these animals have a body clock that measures the tidal cycles. They need to predict the time of the outgoing tide to avoid the danger of drying out. The gravitational pull of the sun also influences the tides. As the relative positions of the sun, earth and moon change, they create the lunar phases.
When the gravitational pull of the moon combines with the sun, it creates the greatest tides. These spring tides happen twice every month at both the full and new moons. Twice a month on the half moons, the pull of the moon and sun cancel each other and result in the small neap tides. The lives of many marine animals are governed by this cycle. This prehistoric creature comes ashore at the full moon in summer along the coast of North America. In a ritual unchanged since the age of dinosaurs, the horseshoe crabs emerge to lay their eggs. They synchronize their lives to the highest spring tides so they can leave their eggs on the high water mark. Protected by sand and away from water, the eggs will be safe from predatory fish. During the next month, the eggs undergo a dramatic change also linked to the lunar cycle. By the time of the next spring tide, a miniature horseshoe crab is fully developed. Hatching is synchronized so that the young are washed out by these large tides. Along the shores of California, the full moon causes perhaps the strangest behavior of any fish. The mass stranding of the grunion is in fact vital for the survival of the next generation. This female is laying her eggs at the high water mark. The fish are ashore for the briefest moment. Each wave brings in another shoal. As the female lays her eggs, the males crowd around to fertilize them. Protected by sand, the eggs will hatch on the next spring tide. Before our lives were disrupted by modern living, the moon cycle may once have been linked to our own reproduction. The female's menstrual cycle still averages exactly one lunar month and pregnancy lasts nine lunar cycles. As we sleep, time appears to pass quickly by. If our time perception can change, how does time appear to other creatures? To a fly, our world must appear to move slowly. Its eyes can perceive far smaller time intervals than we can. lives its short life at high speed. <coughs> to a fly, even our fastest actions must appear ponderously slow. Its reaction time is 10 times faster than our own.
Birds also live a high-speed existence. The precision maneuvers of flight require fine timing. Locked in our own time world, we imagine all life perceives time in the same way. But in one brief moment of our existence, the fly is unhurriedly caught by the house martin. The life cycle of a fly is only three weeks. That of a shrew is a year. Each animal exists for a different time period before its body returns to the earth. These different lifespans affect the rates of living. Most mammals, whether elephant or elephant shrew, average the same number of heartbeats in their lives. The elephant shrew lives only two and a half years, but it carries out life at high speed. Its heart beats 600 times a minute, and like most creatures, it will average 800 million beats by the end of its life. The elephant has only 25 heartbeats each minute and lives for 60 years. It would need to speed up 24 times to enter the time world of a shrew. The different rates of living are governed by body size. The largest animals live the longest and carry out their life cycles slowly. We can never be sure just how other animals perceive time, but to a sleeping cheetah, it must pass quickly, just as it does when we're asleep. Time perception appears to be affected both by speed of living as well as the rate the senses receive stimulation. In the excitement of the hunt, time must take on a different meaning. Adrenaline pours into the bloodstream, the heart rate doubles, the senses bombard the brain with information. Just as time appears to stretch for us in an accident, to a cheetah and gazelle the same may happen in a chase. The difference between life and death is literally a split second. It's rare for an animal to reach old age, for older animals move more slowly and are easier to catch. How this change of living rate affects time perception can be seen in our own aging. Older people spend many hours in inactivity and their hearts beat slowly. Children are more active and their hearts beat faster. As we age, our rate of living slows and with it, it seems, our perception of time. For an adult, the years speed by. For a child, a week is a long time. In the ground beneath Cincinnati live creatures with a time sense all of their own. For 17 years, these animals have lived a subterranean existence. They are now emerging into the world for the first and only time. The invasion of the periodic cicadas numbers literally millions for the same event is happening simultaneously over much of North America. They left the trees 17 years ago, immediately after hatching. 
Since then, an internal timer has been measuring the passing years. They are now primed to transform into an adult. Each emergence takes 20 minutes. The wings are pumped up with blood. The body begins to darken and harden. The winged forms are now ready to disperse across the city. They're the longest lived of any insect, but their lives are nearly over. As we begin a new day, the cicadas gain strength by sucking sap. In a passing moment of our lives, the cicadas have to complete their life cycle. They will pair up for only a few minutes. The eggs are laid down a sharp tube that cuts a furrow in the bark. These will provide the next generation. Their useful lives over, they fall to the ground, creating a mass of spent bodies. The cicadas will not appear again for 17 years. Our own swarms persist far longer. We live at the same moment, but in a different time. On our next journey, SuperSense will explore the world of sensory deception. And this BBC book to go with the SuperSense series is available from booksellers.